Welcome to Hypo Brew. I am Tom Brennan, and as I'm recording this, we are locked down in quarantine. Um, for the past two weeks or so, we've been staying at home, only going out for uh, groceries once a week, sometimes twice a week. Uh, work has been wonderful. Uh, the folks I work with are doing a great job. Uh, I've only had to go into work uh, once a week, doing everything remotely. And so here I am, <laughs> stuck at home, uh, not having a whole lot to do. But I want to shoot a video anyway. Just, you know, it's been a little while. And I figured it'd be a good opportunity uh, for you guys to take a tour of the brewery, if you will. Have a, don't think I've ever done that in whole cloth. So we'll make an attempt today. Um, you know, I haven't been able to go out to any, um, there actually was one local brewery I stopped by, grabbed two crowlers, but I've been kind of doing a purge of all the stuff I've got in my, in my, my cellar. And so, uh, usually I'm drinking a home brew when I'm doing these videos <laughs> and I usually am pretty good. I gotta say with labeling things, usually it's just a little notch on a cap, but as you can clearly tell here, no. Nah. Nothing. I think I know what this is, but we are going to pour this and uh, see what it is before we go out on the tour. Ah, I know exactly what it is. All right, so this is um, a fruit cake barley wine. Yep, that's exactly what it is. It's hitting me already. If you guys are on YouTube, which you are, uh, you check out YouTube videos. This was inspired by the guys at Basic Brewing years ago, and every, I guess it would be every summer or fall, I would brew a beer inspired by the uh, fruitcake barley wine recipe. And so what I did this year, and I've been making tweaks every year, and I think I really nailed it this year, uh, I did the recipe... And rather than using US05 for the Chico strain, what I've been doing is putting in, I put the Kvike yeast in, the um, Horndall. Horndall. Uh, so that's what this is. Um, it's got a fruity bouquet in it, fruity nose. Um, there's, there's definitely some spice in there. And one of the things that the, the Horndall yeast strain did it kind of added, and, and we had a homebrew club meeting where I brought in two beers that used Horndall, and somebody else brought in a beer or two that had Horndall in it. Horndall, Horndall. And one thing we noticed, it kind of added to everything. It added kind of a, almost like an orange peel, citrus peel kind of flavor, and for this beer, it was perfect. I have since ditched the Horndall strain, with one exception, and I'll show you that in a little while. Um, but yeah, so that's exactly what this is. This also clocks in somewhere. I want to say it's somewhere near 10%. So, and it's only, um, I think it's only three o'clock, a little bit after three o'clock my time. So we'll see how the night goes. Uh, there was another big bomber that I had in there that didn't have a label in it. And I think that one is a Belgian quad that my, one of my other homebrew clubs put in an Applejack barrel. If you don't know what Applejack is, look it up. It's made by a company called Laird's, which is in a town called Scobieville, New Jersey. In reality, it's kind of like Colts neck -y area. But anyway, regardless, Applejack is essentially uh, frozen apple cider, and they jack it. They concentrate and jack it. Um, so that's what probably I'll be having later on this evening. That's what I'm going to do. I also found that I had... Um, a venison steak that a friend had given me. And so that's what's for dinner because I can't go out to the store and buy any kind of protein. So that's what we're going to do later on. But before that, we are going to take uh, a look at the brewery. And first, you know it's coming, baby. We got to listen to the ska. All 
All right, so first we're going to take a walk out to my shed, um, aka, uh, well, you'll you'll see what it is in a minute. The one thing it certainly is, it is a mess. So excuse the mess. All right. When you first walk in, this is uh, what you're struck with. I mean, aside from the mess, this is my fermentation chamber that I had set up. If you if you uh, have watched my uh, Kieser video. This is actually the exact same uh, freezer, chest freezer that I used for the the Kieser video. But what I did was I made some adjustments. If you could see here, I actually have a larger piece of lumber in here, and I'll show you why I had that in a minute. And because of the larger piece of lumber, and I also have it on wheels. If you can see the wheels down there, just so I can move it around a little bit if I have to. So let's open this up. And the reason why I have a larger collar on here is because it will allow me to have not one but two fermenters in at the same time and what I've done is made a little a little rickety shelf there and so what I can do is I can put two fermenters on here and that will allow me because the two fermenters without the collar won't work uh, so I'm putting the collar in there it gives me the increased height so then I can close I can close this uh, lid and not have to worry about things what I also did as well when I was doing this, because uh, I knew I'd be lifting, you know, uh, what are we talking about? 40 pounds, 40 pounds, eight pounds per gallon of, uh, of beer at a time. What I did was I actually just made a very rudimentary little gate here so I can get myself in there and pull it out without having to straight it over this additional six inches. That's what she said. So <laughs> I've been binging the... <laughs> I've been binging The Office, in case you haven't, in case you didn't, couldn't tell. All right. What I do have is uh, I have a little Inkbird probe here, which goes to the Inkbird, uh, that old, very old Inkbird controller. Works like a champ, though. And then I have that set up right there with a fan. This is slightly different than if you've watched my fermentation chamber video. Uh, but it is still the same controller, I tell them to say. What I also did too is I picked up a, a tilt hydrometer. And if you are looking at this temperature and you're saying to yourself, what the hell is going on here? What I have is in here is a Saison. And it was kind of an accidental Saison. But I'll tell you about that in a minute. So what, what this it does, this uh, my phone here is hooked up to a, uh, a tilt hydrometer, which is in the fermenter. And then that pings back information to a cloud spreadsheet that I can then look at and see the temperature remotely. This uh, gravity reading is actually incorrect. I am now at an adjusted gravity of 10.04. Uh, so I have to look through uh, some more instructions on that. Perhaps if you guys are interested, comment below if you want to hear, if you want to see about my tilt hydrometer. Uh, maybe I'll do a review or something like that. So what happened was that with there we go, I'll do it this way. What happened was uh, that I had intentions on pitching uh, some lager yeast, and I did pitch some lager yeast on a Pilsner and Zotz uh, beer uh, that I brewed up, and I waited two or three days, and it wasn't fermenting. And I had chilled it down to the right temperature, pitched it at the right temperature, and it just wasn't going anywhere. So in a bit of a panic, I pitched Saison yeast in there, and it tore through the beer and fermented it all out in two days three days which is really pretty impressive uh so we'll let it hold at 80 for a little while longer and then see where we go from there i'm gonna take a look real quick here at my uh my my hop storage uh which <laughs> funny enough at one point in time it was it was holding hops and still is but over the past couple of months i've been uh really into uh, fermenting peppers and making hot sauce. And so um, when I find it at the store for very cheap, I will buy some peppers and I do not want to put it in my freezer in my house because then my wife will yell at me. So um, that's what I'm doing now. Because yeah, I do, I do hoard and I do buy it. And one of the things you can tell is that I'm hoarding is I have hops. I probably have, I don't know, actually this is a good day. I usually have, I don't know, 12 pounds of hops in here. And I don't really drink hoppy beers. I don't really make hoppy beers. So I don't know why it's like that, but it is. Now, if you remember, I talked about the horn doll yeast. What I did was, uh, this is a couple weeks ago. I 
forget I put this in the hottest point in the house, and the hottest part of my house is right next to my um, my boiler, and I just have a a mead sitting there, 13 pounds. I think it's 13 pounds of honey. I put in the six gallon batch, and it's now been sitting now for a number of weeks. I made a starter with this just to kind of get the horns all going, and the starter mead was awesome. So we're going to see, maybe at some point in time, while I'm hanging out doing nothing in here, I am going to uh, bottle this and see what happens. If some good comes of it, perhaps I'll make a quick video just to show you how it turned out. Now into the, uh, I guess it would be the storage area of, uh, of the, the brew house. Remember, I, earlier I mentioned about fermenting um, um, peppers. So this is this is what I use, an old ball jar. Airlock is there. I put a grommet for my um, lid there. That's how you ferment peppers. It's actually pretty easy. Green storage here with some omega lids. That one obviously empty. What I do is I keep my uh, random buckets in this cabinet that I have here. There's my Chapman fermenter there. I have, for the most part, um, gotten rid of and not having to use any of my plastic buckets anymore. If I want to do a small batch, I've got two uh, fermenters right there. I also have up here a, uh, a Dutch oven, which I use for sourdough bread cooking. And uh, it's a game changer. If you do sourdough, uh, that is a game changer for sure, getting a Dutch oven. Got kegs here, uh, some leftover kegs. I also have a uh, backup uh, CO2 in case I run out. Over here, I have something out of focus. There we go. I have storage for all my bottles, which have become less and less over the years. And then uh, green mill up there. And then in here, I really have most of most everything else I'm going to need. I do keep my specialty grain in bags and then put them in the food storage containers, mostly broken out like caramel malt there. I've got my, you know, um, uh, base malty, like Vienna malt, that kind of stuff, uh, in these containers. There's a bag of wheat malt. Uh, random lids. What I also do, too, is I have my... Here's my uh, brew sheets. This is for the Zatz um, brew day that I had. I also keep... Uh, let me see if I can do this here. also keep... And actually, I got for Christmas an Anvil scale, which now I'm weighing my water, which uh, has become very handy because water will always weigh the same, although the volume will change. Uh, Star Sand sanitizer, PBW, uh, those types of random things. I hang on to all my fermenting stuff in here. And uh, just some random tubes. There's my mash ton. Um, my hot liquor tank. Oh, you know what I want to show you guys? <laughs> this was something I, I, I found earlier, and I have stopped using it. But um, it's kind of funny that this is what really got me started uh, home brewing and showing it on YouTube. Is this wort chiller? That's the. This is the wort chiller from that video that you probably have all seen. Uh, it has developed. Ooh. There you go. It has developed a little bit of a hole, if you can't tell. So that is no longer in use. I wonder if I could recycle that. Anyway, just figured I'd show you that for fun, because you've, you've all probably seen that. One thing I'm actually a little proud of, not that I'm showing things off, this is my um, my bottle capper. I found it on Craigslist for like 20 bucks, And uh, it's really pretty cool. It's very, you know... It is ornate, it works awesome, and it gets the job done when I'm not putting stuff in a keg. So uh, I love this thing. It's really pretty cool. And here we are, um, back outside. The very quick tour. I didn't want to show you my keys here for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that I have I just posted up a video for the keyser. Number two, um, my wife and one of my kids is playing the new Animal Crossing game, and I did not want to disturb them. Especially because if I started doing my hypo brew voice, uh, they would all laugh at me and ruin the video. <laughs> That's got to speak the truth, man. Um, you know, 
one thing I did want to encourage you all to do was, especially if we're all kind of hanging out and you know, doing our thing, um, is just to um, just to be cool to one another. You know, um, it can get really weird out there, and you know, people buying toilet paper and you know, buy the, the truckload for some reason. Um, so sorry for that commentary. Just kind of went off on a tangent there. What I did want to say was this past Monday, I was on a, a homebrew club meeting using the a virtual platform. And let me tell you something. It was really kind of cool to talk beer with people at a homebrew club meeting, even though it was virtual. Because we're all just, you know, let's talk about riot zones, when, you know, just, just talking about beer. And I think that that's something that you kind of miss when you're by yourself, especially if you have someone who you're at home with. Who doesn't appreciate beer for one reason or another? Um, you know, so it's a good opportunity to kind of get out, even though you're not really getting out. And uh, I found that that was really pretty, uh, pretty cool to do. So if you have an opportunity to, to do that, I don't know if those things are free or not. They could be free, but you know, use some kind of platform to to have a meeting of sorts, because uh, it, it it helps. You know, um, talking about things, even if it's not you know the 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 item of the day. It helps to talk about things, especially talk about things that you enjoy. And if you're watching this video, you enjoy beer, you enjoy home brew beer. So it's always an opportunity to, to uh, you know, chat about stuff. If you guys want me to answer any questions you have, uh, any additional questions about, quote, the brewery, uh, feel free to drop a comment down below, um, and we'll see what happens. Um, for now, I'm going to finish drinking this um, 9 or 10% uh, barley wine and hopefully just kind of hang out and eat my steak. Maybe I'll make some baked potatoes or something. But anyway, uh, until next time, you guys all be safe out there. Stay away from one another. Do it. Stay away from one another. <laughs> and see if you could join up virtually with some folks and just have a good time to talk about beer because I think it's important. And quite honestly... Even though this is a very short video, uh, this has helped me because I'm talking about beer with you guys. So it's important. You know, talk about things you like and things you love. That's it. And that's what we're doing today. All right. You guys, again, be safe and um, cheers. Cheers.